Welcome, everybody. This is the U.S. Grace Force Podcast. I'm Doug Berry, along with my very good friend, always amazing, Father Richard Heilman. And tonight we got back with us Mark Mallet, our Canadian buddy from up north. We got, hey. we got major areas. Like, I'm in Texas. Father, you're in Wisconsin. Mark, you're up in Canada. And our, our techie guy behind the scenes, Kent, the mysterious man who makes everything come together, glues it all together behind the scenes. He's in, I think, Ohio. Yeah, so... Anyway, good to have you all out there with us. Before we get started, of course, everything needs to begin with prayer. Father Heilman, that is your department. All right. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wonderful. Thank Amen. you very much, Father. And we, of course, thank the heavens. We thank St. Michael, Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, and all those wonderful intercessors for us in heaven. We thank Almighty God for the opportunity to be able to bring this program to you all. And we're so thankful for all of you out there who pray for us and encourage us and support us. We can't do it without you. So God bless you. You're always in our prayers. And for those of you who support us through the Patreon program, that is also a very powerful way to help us continue to get these messages out. I would say as long as we have the time and the resources and the ability to do this through technology, we're going to do the best we can. So if you're interested in helping to support us financially, you can click the link in the description below. Go on out and a few dollars... Every month goes a long way and helps us reach, by the grace of God, many hearts, many souls, many lives, and that is the goal. So we thank you for that. Also, don't forget to check out the U.S. Grace Force gear page for T-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, the whole nine yards. Great stuff, good stuff, fun stuff, way to get that message out and evangelize, and that also helps support this work. So we thank you for that. And of course, we have been hitting some pretty serious topics in recent months and getting some pretty serious feedback and a lot of encouragement from people who are very concerned, as we all are, with the events we're seeing happening in the world. They're unfolding, and they have been for quite some time. And Mark, we had you on, oh, I don't know, we've had you on a few times now. In fact, there is an episode, I should say, that the people on the YouTube part of our podcast have not seen of you. It went up, and it was taken down within 30 minutes. I will edit out what we're going to need to in order to get it back up on YouTube. So everybody keep an eye out for that. I plan on doing that in the not too distant future. It went up on Rumble for those who want to watch it on Rumble. But the last time we had you on, it upset a few people, of course, out there in the YouTube world. And so we were restricted on that one. And we got a little uh, time out on that one, to put it simply. But that is the, the nature of this. What was that? <laughs> The censors of YouTube. <laughs> the censors of YouTube. That's exactly what it is. It violated community guidelines. And uh, of course, um, you know, it's the constant, it's the constant cat and mouse, constant battle that we're dealing with right now. And unfortunately, yep. that's the sort of thing. And I know we've talked with you about this that happens in societies, the censorship part before things, unfortunately, will ramp up even to other levels of persecution. And we yes. see that unfolding all the time. Generations, it, it happens all the time. Uh, in societies everywhere in the world. We've seen it throughout the history of man. You know, we always try to be very careful on the on the podcast here not to get ourselves in a position where we can't get the message out anymore. So we do try to navigate best we can on certain things. So, um, but we've got stuff going on right now, recent events, and is it heralding the coming of the Antichrist? And there's stuff out there from an eclipse at the time we record this to a red heifer sacrifice that's being talked about, which has roots that go back many, many years in the Jewish faith and could herald another level of apocalyptic type um, problem, we could say, in the world. Uh, the, the Muslims are not crazy about this whole red heifer sacrifice. That, And then we've got this CERN, this, this atom collider uh, thing where they, they're trying to play God and create a universe. I mean, literally, they're trying to play God and create a universe. Reminds me of the Tower of Babel back in the Old Testament, and God was not thrilled about that whole process. That didn't end well for people. But, you know, Mark, all these different events and more that are going on, natural events and supernatural signs in the sky type events uh, are, are concerning, and there does seem to be a lot that's coalescing and coming together uh, at a very unique moment in history. And there's a lot here we could unpack. So let's just get into it, yeah. Mark. 
Yeah, I, I you know, I'm, I'm as a as a journalist, I tend to be. I'm just naturally cynical, and even m maybe more cynical than I should be. But you know, people would be surprised that I, you know, am one of the founders of that website, Countdown to the Kingdom dot com, where we are posting um, what we would call credible. At least we think they're the most credible prophetic voices in the church. And yet, I remain very skeptical and very. You know, like, for instance, with this coming eclipse, um, you know, there's so much speculation about what it could mean and so on. And, you know, someone wrote me the other day and just said, you know, well, what do you think this means? And I said, it means that the moon is going to pass over the sun. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I, I kind of, that's where I almost want to leave it. But at the same time, our Lord did say that there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And prior to the Internet and prior to this modern age, uh, you know, not just as astronomers and the, in the occult, it would have been astrologers, but even people within the church were looking at the stars to understand. The biblical account of Christ's birth is marked by the movement of a star uh, through the sky. So, um, Jesus said to that we, we should be watching for these signs. And for me, it's you know, it's interesting that the, the eclipse is going to be passing over these towns called Nineveh, and before that, it's going to pass over one town called Jonah. So there you have Jonah the prophet, and then you have Nineveh, these towns. And many people say, well, this could be heralding a possible p potential chastisement of, of America or something, earthquakes or something of the sort. But, you know, you guys, my first response to that is, listen, if we're not listening to Our Lady who has been appearing for the last century, is this eclipse going to make a difference? I don't know. Maybe, maybe there are people out there right now who are actually looking at this and going, this is too much of a coincidence, what's going on, and, and maybe they are getting their lives in order through it. Um, I was surprised that my brother said to me, a friend of his, uh, said to he he asked him the he was talking about what's going on in the world and he flat out asked his friend the other day who as far as I know is not a Catholic and not really a practicing Christian he asked him he said do you think we're in the end times and his friend said oh yeah absolutely we're in the end times mm -hmm. and so I I think that the world right now people are picking up they th that they are sensing something and I think that's God's grace at work they are sensing something is wrong something is off the rails that we can't keep going in the direction we are and I, I want to just um in a sense uh, pull you out of the the uh conspiracy theory junk bin for a second Doug because some of your readers or listeners right now might be going, oh, well, what's this talk about the Antichrist and so on? Yeah. Well, it was in 1903 that Pope Pius X in an encyclical, which is a high level official document of the church, he looked at the world and he said, who can fail to see that society at the present time, more than in any past age, is suffering from a terrible and deep-rooted malady which developing every day is eating into its inmost being and dragging it to destruction. He says, you know what it is, apostasy from God. And he said, when all this is considered, he said that the beginning of those evils which are reserved for the last days may already be here and that the, the son of perdition of whom the apostle speaks may already be in the world. So here's a Pope saying this in an encyclical in 1903, and I can only wonder what would Pius X say if he were alive today? Yeah. Mark, you know, it, there's so, so many things, and I'm with you in terms of like the eclipse and that. And I always I always tell people, and they've heard me say it a million times, but I don't predict what God's going to do because then he does the opposite to humble me, you know. <laughs> but uh, so it's hard to make predictions, but you can't help but notice that that things are happening uh, on and around that day, like I, I just while I was listening to, I recounted the days. Um, you said Jonah, you said Nineveh, and here we are. The 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 uh, eclipse happens the day after Divine Mercy Sunday, but if you count the days between uh, the eclipse and Pentecost, what did Jonah say? Forty days more. It's forty days, and what I've been drawn to, Mark, is is that uh, I think we're in a time. That was was prefigured almost by that Battle of Lepanto. You know that was a mm. time in history where we were divided, where we were weak, and and what and 
so what happened? The enemies of the church felt, okay, this is our time. This is our time right now for us to move in and take control. And I feel like that's what's happening right now, is that those who are the enemies of the church, uh, pagans, whatever you want to call them, uh, the, one, the ones that take offense at God, they're, they're the ones right now that are going, okay, they become weakened enough, it's time for us to move in. And so we're seeing the rise. I mean, not just a rise, like a, like a volcanic eruption of this uh, p- radical paganism that is uh, flexing their chest and, and, and saying, we are the leaders, you will obey during this time. And there's so many signs of that. I know that um, uh, one of the things that you remarked is something's happening with CERN uh, on that same day on April 8th. Could you explain that whole thing? Yeah. And then and then also if you would remark, because we were talking before the show started, what, what, they, what they did, I think, back in 2017 in this ritual, this pagan ritual they had. But if you could help us understand what we're talking about here and, and how that's yet another thing we need to look at. Well, yeah, it, it, this is what's caught my attention is not so much even, you know, the Nineveh connection and so on. I mean, it, we have to remember eclipses happen every year in different places in the world. Um, it's not the first time we've ever had a total solar eclipse. But it's interesting that the uh, the uh, large colloidal uh, uh, hadron collider, I think it's called, they're, they're, they're going to fire this thing up and try and create this God particle, this moment when the universe was created. They want to study dark matter and so on, and they're going to do that on April 8th. And, uh, you know, you might just dismiss it as kind of a just, it's another scientific ex- experiment happening on April the 8th. So be it. But when that collider came into uh, for the opening ceremonies when they opened it was a highly lengthy occult ceremony. I mean, just bizarre. And you're thinking if this was a ribbon cutting ceremony, you'd have some scientists gathered and from different groups who, throughout the world who funded this and are interested in it. They cut the, the, the ribbon and, you know, uh, you know, thanks for your support. But instead they had this really bizarre occultic ceremony and now they're going to be firing it up on this April 8th. Um, another thing is NASA, which also people, you know, have questions about NASA's origins and so on, and, and all the connections out there to Freemasonry and so on. It, NASA is apparently going to fire three rockets into this uh eclipse into the path of the eclipse to study it and this is called atmospheric pertur- uh, perturbations around eclipse path and the acronym for that is apep but if you look at the word apep that is actually an egyptian age egyptian deity who embodies darkness so here again is that dark matter <laughs> and disorder well anyone who knows anything about the freemasons understands that their whole um, modus operandi is to create chaos. The the motto of the Freemasons, Illuminati, really, and they were adopted by the Masons, is order out of chaos. And so I shared with you guys, I think on a previous webcast, how the seven seals of Revelation really are that man-made chaos. War is the second seal. The third seal is hyperinflation and a collapse of the economy. I mean, we're seeing these things as we speak. We're creating chaos. The reason... It's creating chaos. I mean, they talk about the... Okay, talk, talk about the fourth seal. Famine, sword, the plague. I mean you got food plants burning up throughout the United States. You've got supply chain lines being damaged as we speak. Uh, you've got um, the United Nations in 2023, war, two, 20, no, 2022 warning that there was going to be a global famine. And yet you've got government leaders like Biden and uh, Justin Trudeau and others trying to put solar panels and wind turbines on prime agriculture land and covering it up. I mean, why hasn't the United Nations called for farmers throughout the entire world this spring to make sure you're seeding wheat and edible grains because there's a f- food shortage? They haven't said a word about that. Why is that? And the answer is clear. 
Joe Biden, Justin Trudeau, Macron, uh, the the previous uh, leader, uh, Boris Johnson of the UK and other leaders throughout the West have all picked up at the same time. And we see them doing everything they can to absolutely destroy the Western world, which really is at the heart of all of this. Now you have this eclipse and, you know, we're going to fire these rockets called APEP, which are the rockets of disorder and other things happening around the eclipse in the occult. And I think that that, to me, is a little more intriguing even than what others are saying about Nineveh. I do want to get back into a little bit more on the CERN issue. Um, I think a lot of people have have kind of missed that. And just doing a little bit of research on the opening ceremony, there are images I would not want to put in this podcast. It is so bizarre. In many of the news stories, if you do a search yeah. for it, opening ceremonies of CERN, um, they actually say a bizarre opening ceremony for this in Switzerland for this thing. Uh, it is, it's freakish. It really is. And dignitaries of different countries were all there in the bleachers alongside as this parade went by of some really bizarre, strange, as you said, occultish looking things. And some of it wasn't even subtle. It's just strange to, to me. And it's strange to many people. And there's, you've already got, for instance, the Ni Niagara Falls region declaring a state of emergency for that day. And many people are you, from the Niagara Falls region are saying, wait a minute, we, we have millions of people come to this region all the time to see the Niagara Falls. And now we're going to declare a state of emergency because of a solar clip that's going to last three, uh, three, three minutes. Um, th there's just a lot of weird things happening out there. And we're, I mean, we're just living in weird times to begin with. But you've, you've got, again, you've got this CERN facility wanting to fire it up on that day. You've got NASA wanting to fire up these rockets. And uh, another thing, though, that we discussed that's interesting that's not happening on April 8th, to my knowledge, but is happening in April, is the sacrifice of these red heifers, according yeah. to the book of Numbers, mm -hmm. chapter right. 19 in the Old Testament. And this is not, again, it's not conspiracy theory. This is on mainstream media like CBS News and so on. They're all reporting it. Yeah. These red heifers were discovered in Texas. So not a single hair on these red heifers is black or gray or they all have to be red. It has to be a completely pure, unblemished, spotless heifer. And they want to bring these to the Temple Mount area where there's an altar set up, a white altar, and they're going to sacrifice these heifers according to the prescriptions of Rev uh, Numbers chapter 19. And this is to basically consecrate uh, and prepare for the building of the temple uh, there in Jerusalem, the rebuilding of the temple. And this is significant in biblical prophecy and even to us as Catholics. And the reason is is that many of our church fathers actually spoke about this. They prophesied, uh, for, for instance, uh, St. Arrhenius, saying that the Antichrist, uh, when this Antichrist shall have devastated all things in this world, he will reign for three years and six months and will sit in the temple at Jerusalem. Now, I just want to back up a bit, if I could. This Antichrist shall have de devastated all things in this world. And I'm convinced that the seven seals is exactly that. And again, as I've shared with you guys in the past, it was around 2006, the Lord spoke in my heart and said, there's a, a great storm coming upon the world like a hurricane. Hmm. And it was just days later, I opened up the book of Revelation chapter six. I began to read about these seven seals. And again, that, that voice of the spirit, I sensed the Lord saying, this is the great storm that is coming upon the world. That was 2006. And as you know, I began to write about these things. I have now over 1800 writings on my website explaining this great storm that I think is unfolding. I mean, I'm you guys, I look at the headlines, you see them too. These are the seals of revelation. I mean, I couldn't have made that up in 2006. That At the same time as we have a global war that's starting and started, I guess you could say, and that we have hyperinflation, which is the third seal, that we have famine and plague, right, that we've been going through, and they're telling us new ones are coming. We just learned today that bird flu has now passed over to a person, <laughs> that just happened to the, today before this webcast. 
I mean, all these things are happening and we have also in the prophetic realm, it seems to be a stirring suggesting that the sixth seal, this great shaking in which everybody seems to think it's a judgment of some sort. That's the sixth seal that brings us to the eye of the storm, the seventh seal, which is silence on earth for half an hour is what it says. That's the eye of the hurricane. And that silence, I believe, is where God is going to, and you read it in the next chapter, he's going to mark the foreheads of the believers, of the 144,000. And at the same time, you have to understand, if the Antichrist, according to St. Arrhenius, is behind the devastation that we are already seeing unfolding, he knows, and certainly the devil knows, that this coming illumination of conscience or warning as the Catholic mystics speak of it, where everyone will see themselves as if they are standing before God in judgment. It's not the end of the world. It's a great shaking of the consciences of men. You better believe that the Antichrist knows this coming. The devil certainly does. And I believe during this time of silence, the marking, you're also going to see a false prophet arise who's going to say, oh, no, no, no. What you experienced was, wasn't was Jesus and the cross that many that St. Faustina saw in the sky, the seer, American seer Jennifer speaks about it, that many will see the cross appear in the sky and where the wounds of Christ were, light will be flooding the earth. St. Faustina saw it and others have seen it. The Antichrist will explain it away and he might even be able to do it by uh, holograms and so on. We know that technology exists, drones and all kinds of things, false signs and wonders. Our Lord spoke of it. And begin to explain away this warning in terms of, in New Age terms, that it wasn't an enlightenment of people's consciousness, but it was us moving toward a higher consciousness, a oneness with each other and the world and the Christ within. And that Christ within is not Jesus, it's this cosmic energy. And the Vatican has a beautiful document, a powerful document on this, Jesus Christ, the water bearer of life, in which they prophesy all of this that's coming. And so this is why I think it's significant that these heifers are being sacrificed because it it's not only going to possibly bring about the building of this temple in Jerusalem, but this is going to throw the Islamic world into rage that the Jews would do this. And with the bombing of the Iranian embassy that happened in the last 24 hours, we are seeing everything almost purposely pushing us to this chaos, to the very ring of the eye of the storm, which in which hell is being unleashed on earth. And when you understand that the Antichrist wants this, uh, so that he can bring order out of chaos, then you understand all of this makes sense. Because otherwise, you look at what our politicians are doing right now, like Trudeau and Biden, none of it makes sense until you understand that this is on purpose. And I'll just pause here and let you guys jump in, because I do want to share with you something the Lord said to me about the movie Dune that's tied into all of this. <laughs> well, I, all, all I kept thinking about it, because you've you been using the word chaos, and I absolutely agree with you. I've been saying the, the way I've been putting it is, you know, the the elites, the New World or whatever you want to call them, um, it feels like they want to <clears throat> make us their beggars. You know that that we are so defeated, and we are we we don't know where to turn. Uh, and again, it can be the economy, it can be the open border, you know, fentanyl. I mean, you just, you go on and on and on. It just and and I think people right now are feeling punch drunk. You know, what, what do we do? Yeah. And so uh, it seems to me, and and if you could speak to this, Mark, is this intentional by those who count themselves as the elites or the rulers of the world right now? They're to, they're literally is is part of their plan to create chaos, to create this this. This uh, weakened economy, this open border, whatever you want to throw in there, drugs, crime. Uh, I mean, it's just, again, we're punched trunk right now. It's like, where, where, where is any sense of order? And I just want to end with this comment because I keep saying the word order. But uh, people have heard me say this before. But my favorite part of the Mass after the consecration is the line just before the consecration. 
in the Eucharistic prayer one, and that is order our days in your peace. And I think that's what we're called in any way that we can is, is we're to, and I've always loved the expression. It's the motto for the uh, grace force is uh paravututa box peace through strength. I feel Mark th that we're at a place right now where I, like I said earlier that we've gotten so weak that the, that the enemy just feels like, okay, you're easy pickings. It is, we're just going to come in and we're going to do it. And here's what we're going to do first. Are we going to create, are they purposely creating chaos? Is that is that part of their plan? Or is it just uh, something that happens? I don't know. Is that their plan? Well, we, uh, they they are because we know we've read it in the in the writings of the Freemasons. They speak about this. They speak about um, overturning as. Um, uh, sorry, is it was it Pius the Twelfth and Divini Redemptoris? I, I I can't remember the document off hand, but he speaks about how there's this plot of the Freemasons, the secret societies, to overturn the natural order of things established by by the Church and even the political order, and to create a new order that is completely based on naturalism so that everything is just you know we're just doing the best we can to order what we has been evolved and so now when you understand that these guys embrace evolution they look at the world they believe as john paul ii pointed out in the powerful prophetic document the gospel of life he said that there's a conspiracy against life that these men like the pharaohs of old believe that the world is overpopulated and they're haunted by it and they've openly spoken about it and so their idea i mean it's basically a deception if they believe that we're just highly evolved particles of matter why not just help along evolution and eliminate a few billion people who are just uh, useless eaters who are just wasting resources i mean that's kind of how some of these people look at it um and it's it's a deception and i guess they, they think that they're probably helping the world and helping the planet i mean that's a best case scenario as opposed to them being flat out incarnate evil and some of them are we know we have psychopaths and sociopaths in this world who are just frankly uh evil almost to the bone so um john paul ii called it a conspiracy against life and he warned that we would even see this through the healthcare industry and I, i'll leave it at that so we don't get censored but i think we've already seen the beginnings of these things uh right now father mm -hmm. yeah. and i yeah. want to yeah go ahead father i'm no, going to no. bring up a quote from newman that well, you reminded saying, me I, you know it, it just feels intentional that, 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 that yes that's that's part of their plan when they get behind closed doors okay let's destroy this let's destroy that let's destroy that so that we're in utter chaos and they become our beggars and now we can more easily take control i don't know it just feels like that i don't know if that's that's what's going on well no I, I, and father you you're 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 really just echoing what the popes have warned i mean i can't remember is it's over 200 documents i think or at least 200 statements by the popes and then dozens of documents warning about Freemasonry. I mean, this has been explicitly condemned by the church. It was recently reaffirmed in the last six months, again, the the uh, the condemnation of Freemasonry. So um, the popes warned these guys, it, it's dangerous what they're planning to do. And anyone who becomes a Freemason who's a Catholic is automatically excommunicated. So to your point, Father, though, on that the church is in a weak state, I want to quote again St. Henry Newman. Uh, I don't know if I've quoted him before in this show, but boy, did he ever prophetically, I think, see this weakness and prophesy it and foresee it. And he said, uh, this was in a sermon he gave uh, in the late 1800s. He said, Satan may adopt the more alarming weapons of deceit. He may hide himself, attempt to seduce us in little things, and so to move the church not all at once, but little by little from her true position. And we all know modernism has done that. Yes. He says, I do believe he has done much. Satan has done much in this way in the course of the last few centuries. It is his policy to split us up and divide us, to dislodge us gradually from the rock of strength. 
And if there is to be a persecution, perhaps it will be then. Then when we are all of us in all parts of Christendom, so divided and so reduced, so full of schism, so close upon heresy. And God knows, you all know in the last 13 years, the headlines that have come in this recent papacy have so divided us, so reduced us, so put us on the edge of heresy. And so here's what he says, and this is the part about our weakness. St. Newman, he concludes saying, when we have cast ourselves upon the world and depend for protection upon it, remember, we locked our church doors and threw all of our authority into the world healthcare system. Yep. He said, when we've done in that and given up our independence and our strength, says St. Newman, then Antichrist will burst upon us in fury as far as God allows him. Then suddenly the Roman Empire may break up. And again, the reset is all about destroying the remnant uh, West, which is built upon the Western Roman Empire. And it's now in the process of collapse. We are collapsing right now as we speak. And he says, Antichrist is a persecutor, then will break in. Uh, I think that is one of the most prophetic prophecies of the Antichrist that we, I think that we're now seeing in our midst. Aside from the popes, I've quoted one already. There's two other, three other popes I can quote who've all spoken about this final confrontation coming between the Antichrist, who's already here and may already be here, they said. Yeah, and that was a big thing that St. John Paul II talked about 1976 before he became pope when he was still yep. Cardinal Rotia, and he said that, that we've entered the final conflict between the church and the anti-church, you know, and the gospel and the anti-gospel and so forth. And he talked about how grave this would be, how serious this would be. You know, and along your point there, you know, Mark, as you were saying about um, the, the tearing down, you can't have a reset unless you destroy that which is there to begin with. You, you've got to reset it by breaking it down. And there, I just, one of the concerns I have for so many of us in this world, I've been there, I know, and I know many people still are, the normalcy bias is that mm -hmm. people still live in this idea that, oh, that could never happen. No, it won't be that bad. You know, yeah. if you watch any good, well-done movie about, about Nazi Germany, when Hitler took power, Right in the mid-1930s, right before 38 and 39, when he really started kicking it up a notch and started invading Poland and other places, there was conversation, and this is recorded you know, by many, whether it was the Jewish community or, or others out there, and the conversation was, yeah, things are getting pretty bad. I, I think some people are starting to leave. Oh, I know this family. They're, they've moved to another country. Oh, it's going to blow over. It's not a big deal. And there was this constant sort of, no, it won't happen here. It can happen. It's mm. not going to be that bad. Oh, it's just a bunch of conspiracy. It's a bunch of people who are over-spiritualizing or this or that or whatever they want to say. And yet, as I think we were talking about this at the beginning, the same demons that tempted those men from, from the beginning are still around. And they're still looking for willing participants, willing puppets who will cooperate. Sure with the plan of chaos and destruction. And I agree with you, Father. Mm. We're seeing it on a whole nother level. Yeah. And we are very, very weak. And it, this is an individual thing. And I really want to encourage the audience, and Mark, I'd like your thoughts on this too. We can't keep blaming other people all the time. Yes, church authorities, certain people have a very key position with regards to, to getting the message out, evangelizing, teaching, preaching, and so forth. But I have to be responsible for my soul, for my foxhole, so to speak. I have to be responsible for those that God has entrusted to my life. And I can't just point fingers at other people for the problems that we have. I have to say, okay, I can't go to the Vatican and deal with what the Pope is dealing with. I can pray for him every day in my rosary, though. Yeah. I can take him in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament in adoration. I can offer mass intentions. I can do these types of things. You know, but I, I, I just think that the normalcy bias mindset that a lot of us have and the finger pointing, blaming others that we do is part of the problem that we're dealing with right now. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, t I totally agree with you. I mean, this is one of the things I've had to contend with for years over Pope Francis, people writing me and, and just fretting repeatedly, repeatedly over and over about the Pope. And I still get letters from them. They just send them every day. And uh, I just ignore them and delete them because I look at my call 
is to proclaim the truth as a, as a believer. As you said well, Doug, first of all, to my children and to my wife, to live that in my own home. And I just look at what the Pope is doing. And yeah, it's like, is me posting something on Facebook uh, going to change the Pope's mind? I mean, there's a bit of narcissism, I think, running through this entire generation uh, with social media that we somehow think that that a, a post on social media is going to change the world. Um, or, or that we even think that Pope Francis reads LifeSite News or these other websites all the time that highlight all the papal problems. I mean, last I read from the Pope, he says he only reads one Italian newspaper, doesn't watch TV, and likes to watch movies from the 60s. I mean, this is a guy who just, you know, after he, remember he said, who am I to judge? It he, it was a year later yeah. when he was asked by a reporter about the controversy that call, caused, he said, he said, did that cause a controversy? Like he didn't even know, apparently. So I, I agree with you. I, I think if the Pope is unclear, for instance, if you want to use him as an example, if the Pope is unclear about something of the faith, then I, my response is I'm going to be absolutely clear about what the what the truth is. And I will write about it and I will quote what the church has taught for 2000 years. And I think that's the more constructive way to to counter all of this. The second thing is if we truly allow ourselves to become saints, we know after 2,000 years, God creates revolutions through saints. He absolutely transforms societies around him. So if I look at my own village, my own town, and people aren't converting, then I really have to look in the mirror and say, why, why aren't they? Why, it, what am I doing? Am I, am I maybe falling short? And we have to be careful because, you know, not everyone's going to be a Mother Teresa. Sometimes our call in life is to be that wife who loves her husband into heaven. And that's all she can do. She can, she bears his alcoholism or bears his temper or whatever. And, or, or he's sick and she loves him unto death. And we'll see in heaven that that sacrifice and that faithfulness she made, maybe she'll have a, a mansion higher than St. Teresa of Avila. I mean, we, we just don't know how that all plays out. But, uh, no, I agree with you. We, we, we have to start with ourselves. Um, can, I give another and, side, and, can I give another yeah. side to that? Uh, I hear what you guys are saying, and I get it. Uh, however, <laughs> um, we're living in an age right now, this is a point in history where a very effective tool is influencing souls all around us. And they are filling them with lie after lie after lie. And they are the normalcy bias. They are, they are creating new normals all over the place. And, and while, while, while we are doing what? Okay. Um, I feel compelled. Uh, and, and here's the qualification I'll give though. I think that that one of the ways we're failing is that we're attacking each other, okay? And, th and that goes to calumny and detraction. I do not want to do that. And yeah. some of my some of my great models are the uh, Bishop uh, or Cardinal Burke is what first one that comes to mind. Uh, how? But but what does he do? He's basically saying, wait wait, I don't understand. Can we clarify this? Okay, the dubia, right? Uh, and that's the approach. And if I do have a problem with one of our spiritual leaders or whatever, I generally don't give my opinion. I give Cardinal Burke's or, or somebody else's opinion. But here's where I'm going with this, is that I do believe that more than any other time in history, we cannot allow the enemy to control the narrative. We have got, I go, I, I don't go on social media to see who put up a, a butterfly emoji. I go on there to try to be at one with the people who are standing in truth. And I try to be, I, I try to, I try to be a uh, contributor to that truth. You know, I do a lot of teachings online. I've done it for years. I feel compelled to do that. But I think we are obliged to use the tool that is destroying souls in our midst because we're not using it enough. I fully agree with you. And I mean, right now I'm about to share with you a quote from Benedict the 16th, and we're going to put it out there to your tens of thousands of listeners. And I, you know, you talk about normalcy bias. How many people are going to hear what I'm about to say in 2023? This is quoted in the American conservative, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI said, 
we see how the power of the Antichrist is expanding, and we can only pray that the Lord will give us strong shepherds who will defend his church in this hour of need from the power of evil. Yep. And that's, I've confirmed that quote. That's from Benedict the Sixteenth. He didn't say we will see how the, we see how the power of Antichrist could come. How we he said we see how the power of the Antichrist is expanding, yep. which suggested the Antichrist he believed before he passed away is already on the earth. And so, I mean, we can keep saying to people. You're just a bunch of doom and gloom prophets. And I mean, I've had my share of that thrown at me. And I just keep <laughs> doing what you do. You quote the people who are in authority. You right. quote the popes like Benedict the Sixteenth, Pius the Tenth, John Paul II, and so on, and say, well, what, do you, what about these guys? These are the chief shepherds of the church who um, who are there to defend the church and resist the power of evil on our behalf. How do we just keep ignoring them? How do we just keep ignoring these signs like the red heifers and the great reset and all these things these guys are doing, how the book of Revelation chapter 6 is unfolding before our very eyes? How and when do we finally say, you know what, maybe we should listen to our mama She's appearing all over the world telling us to prepare. And maybe we ought to start taking her serious. I, it may be until this touches people's own flesh uh, that they will finally listen when they begin to experience real famine, the violence of war, the violence of martyrdom in their families. I don't know what it'll take, Father. Um, but I think I agree with you. We need to counter the narrative by speaking the truth. And exactly. um, I mean, I'm just been on fire lately. Wanted to just talk about Jesus. I mean, every time, every time I get a chance to speak His name, I just want to speak His name yep. because I think there's power in that name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Jesus, Jesus. You know, I just want to say His name over and over. It's not all about just the end times, right? But it is part of our message. Right. It's our hope. Right. After this comes an era of peace, not the age of Aquarius. And uh, that's one thing that's been pointed out. Um, Greg Reese, who I don't agree with everything Greg Reese says as a journalist. Uh, I don't think he's a, he's not a Christian. I don't believe uh, he certainly takes exception with some things in Catholicism. But he's been a pretty decent journalist from what I can tell. And he pointed out that this eclipse and these all these eclipses, which mark kind of an alpha and omega over America, we know that's the beginning of the end, also marks the end of a 26,000 year period, according to Freemasons, he says, that marks the end of an era and the beginning of a new age of Aquarius and a new age of peace. And that caught my attention because that's exactly what I have written about is the clash of these two kingdoms that is happening right now, the kingdom of the Antichrist and the kingdom of Christ. This is what John Paul II said in, in uh, 1976, that there's this final confrontation between the two. And so these Masons believe they are bringing us into an age of peace, of universal fraternity and brotherhood and all this, is where Our Lady is preaching that the gospel will reach the ends of the earth and unity in Christ under one shepherd and one flock. And this is what we're seeing unfolding before us right now. And I think is part of why we're seeing Rome is being shaken right now and being purified. It's all part of it. Yeah, I mean, I think, so many of the prophecies of the Blessed Mother have referenced evil reaching the highest levels of the church. You know, La Salette, Our Lady said it there. You know, that we would have these problems at the highest levels, you know, and right. I, I just think that I, I, I encourage people to do some kind of historical digging into some of the conversations, some of the attitudes that people had, you know, as I mentioned earlier about, for example, before Hitler took power and when things were starting to unfold, because this was not an overnight thing. OK, what Hitler did was not overnight. Mm -hmm. There were things that were being put in place for several years before, and people still kind of turned a blind eye, and a lot of people still kind of said, and you see this in writings and from the past, well, you know, we just didn't think it was that big a deal. You know, in fact, there's a couple of uh, statements from Holocaust survivors who said, 
Well, you know, little things happened here and there. Laws were put in place. You know, laws, censorship laws. You couldn't say this. It would be considered, we'd call it today, hate speech. Even to the point where in some countries, you could be looking at potentially life in prison. Right, Mark? When it comes yeah. to being um, found guilty of certain hate speech crimes. This is ongoing right now. You know that where you are. And when these people said at one point, when we had to sew the star on our clothing, we knew this was not going to be turned around. But up until then, there were all these incremental mm. changes that took place that wore people down yeah. and the normalcy bias just kind of dominated, you know, and they were pointing blame to others. And, you know, there are so many quotes out there. I think it was Bonhoeffer, if I'm not mistaken, who said, when they came for this group, you know, I didn't speak out. Then they came for this group, I didn't speak out. Pretty soon when they came for my group, and I'm, I'm this isn't the exact quote, there was no one to defend me. Yep. So in other words, yep. if we're not stepping up and speaking out where we can from our foxhole, in our families, and with the means that we have, and we've always tried to do that with the Grace Force podcast, try to encourage people to take steps, be active. Don't just, don't just criticize the darkness without bringing light to the moment and to the situation in the way you can. Of course, with the rosary and and mass and fasting, and then actual yeah. steps that you can take, you know, like um, whether it's preparing food, water, shelter, medical defense, starting prayer groups, rosary cynicals, you name it. We have all kinds of things that we can be active in doing. Get out of the normalcy bias. Don't point fingers at everybody else. Look in the mirror first and do something spiritually first, of course, and always, but then naturally as well. But, you know, you know, Mark, I'd like your, your take on what you see. And we got to be careful, of course, with the words, because we don't want to be taken down, you know, because we can't get the message out if we're taken down. So you see societies and communities and governments, even westernized ones, that are getting to the points where censorship and speech and these types of things have been attacked for quite some time. But now to the point where the potential of life in prison is being thrown out there or I mean, is that actually happening where you are now? Is hey, that can, and can I build real law? quick? On, can I build real quick on what Doug just said? Because yeah, good father. <laughs> yeah, because you, you were talking about what was going on in Germany and Poland and things like that, and, and the normalcy bias, and you know, and then Bonhoeffer, then this group, then that group. That's what I feel is going on right now. Is that 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 they're more aggressive and they're more um, arrogant uh, in 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 what they're doing, and that isn't that what Hitler did, right? And then what happened? An allied force rose up. It makes me think of the Battle of the Ponto. We were weak and divided. We kind of accepted everything, you know. And then all of a sudden, what? A holy league rose up. Mark, can you? Uh, I think this is where Doug was going too. I mean, is there any chance at all that we will finally uh, be shaken enough? And maybe that's what brings the ear of peace. I don't know. But that some new holy league rises up in these times because enough is enough. Or I, I think I, I I think you're going to go and I, I agree with you. I think it's got to get a lot worse because mm -hmm. we're just we're just uh, sleeping mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think we want to avoid fatalism. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. The, you know, God can always raise up people who right. resist evil. And that was something that Pope Benedict on the airplane to Portugal spoke about how, you know, how God would raise up people who resist evil. And it's in in a sense that restrains the evil when enough good men are re, are resisting it. But I think we're at a time now where there's there's not a resistance. There's not enough right. good men resisting evil. Uh, I think we're seeing the restrainer lift that St. Paul spoke about in 2 Thessalonians, that when this restrainer lifts, that the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, would come. Yep. And uh, uh, I, I think we're beginning to see, uh, we're, we're seeing that happening right now. I mean, there's nothing really restraining evil at this point. Uh, it makes me think of Revelation chapter 13. If we are living that... And according to Our Lady and several apparitions, she says, you're, you're living the book of Revelation. If we're living that, then this beast who arises, um, it, it, the people cried out, who can compare to this beast? Who can fight against it? And we saw what happened over the last three years, brothers. Nobody could fight against it. 
they just locked it down. Mm. That right. was it. And, you know, we, I was talking to to um, uh, to some family over Easter and we, we just, it was like we were saying it was like a dream. Did that really happen? Okay. What just happened? Mm. And we're all still kind of decompressing from it. I mean, the, the, what this has done psychologically to this generation, uh, I don't even think we fully grasp that yet. Right. Um, I, I think Christians as, as have tools to work through this. We have our Lord, we have grace, we have our prayer life. But man, if you, you don't have a life of grace, I don't know how people are working through it, uh, which is probably why we're seeing addictions go up, suicides go up, civil chaos is going up. Um, I mean, these are things that are happening so you know it, it, and i'm not saying i'm not saying this in a way of, of wanting to cave into fatalism because on the one hand you reach a point brothers where if we we don't listen to heaven and heaven's warnings you just reach a point where you reap what you sow and mm -hmm. our lady warned in 1917 if you don't consecrate Russia to my immaculate heart, the errors of Russia will spread throughout the world. Well, what are the errors of Russia? Basically, Marxist, socialist, communist yep. tenants. Yeah. Those were penned, by the way, by Karl Marx, who yep. was on the payroll of the Freemasons. By the way, side note, communism was hatched by the Freemasons. So now we're seeing a global communism. We haven't listened to Our Lady. You know, the consecration, I believe, was fulfilled by Pope Francis, was it two years ago? Um, I, I think they, they tried and I, they probably succeeded. But I mean, we're, we're way late, way late. Mm -hmm. And I think what's coming right now is the result of our choices, which isn't fatalism. We chose this path. Right. Humanity's gone down this road. We're still aborting hundreds of thousands of babies every day. Uh, I mean, it's it's unbelievable what we're doing, and I think that because there's no sign of of a mass national repentance, because our national leaders, whom we've elected and re-elected, <laughs> are leading us in a godless direction, and we don't see really any national repentance. I don't see. I, I see us going down this path and having to go through this passion of the church, and I think that's what we are heading into. We are literally heading into that fifth seal, which is the beginning of the passion of the church. And, and then after that, I believe the last half, after the eye of the storm will come the last half of the storm. I believe that the Antichrist may emerge in this time of peace after the warning. He will make peace with the nations. He will bring Islam and Christians and Jews together. Remember the Abraham, Abrahamic house. Remember that our Pope signed on to it with the other leaders. And I, I'm not saying that the Pope had nefarious intentions, but I think this Abrahamic house and this agreement can be used in a nefarious way where we come to this peace in the world, where after all the chaos of hunger and hyperinflation and war, if not nuclear war breaking out, everyone, including all of us on this webcast, are going to be desperate to see peace. And that's where the danger lies in this. This is why now you and I have to be men of prayer and women of prayer, listening to the Holy Spirit, praying our rosaries now, fasting now, being in grace now, because we just witnessed a great portion of humanity completely deceived over the last three years. Mm -hmm. And scientists like Dr. Peter McCullough and others have spoken about this mass hypnosis, this mass thing. They don't know how else to explain it. I do. It's called deception. Mm -hmm. And so we're at the point of that again. And that's the purpose of this chaos, to bring us to the point where we need a savior. And can I share with you? What the Lord said to me the morning that I went to see Dune. Do we have time for me to share that? Yes, please. Sure. I want, I'm yeah, wanting yeah. you to share that. Yes, please. Okay. Well, I went and saw Dune Part 1 two years ago and watched it. And so that was two years ago. Dune Part 2 just came out before Easter. So I totally forgot what that movie was about. I just remembered it being about planets and spice. So, the, the, you know, the spice that they harvest on the planet's surface. Giant, giant surface. worms, too. Enormously and Big giant worms. worms. Big, ugly worms. <laughs> so the morning of going to part two, this is about The two last full ago. moon was a worm moon, by the way, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I'm lying in bed between that place of waking and sleeping, and I sense the Lord speaking in my heart. I'm not audibly, but you know, I'm I've been writing the nowword.com for 18 years, and this is how the Lord speaks in my I've been heart. With you from with, the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Well, th- Praise God. Well, it's a, it's like an interlocution, but it's not audible. The Lord starts telling me the movie you're going to see tonight, Dune Part 2, is about the coming of the Antichrist. And he said some other things, and honestly, I was half awake. I couldn't remember them. So I get to the movie, and I'm, you know, I'm just caught up being there with my sons and the fun of being out of the house. And I start watching the movie, and all of a sudden, I start remembering what he said. And as I watch the movie, I honestly, I had tears in my eyes all about this coming Mahdi. And this is what the, the Islamic uh, religion is waiting for, that out of chaos, and this is what they believe, and, and there's some radicals in, I think, Iran and others who believe it, it's to their benefit to start a war because out of this war will come this Mahdi, the savior. The Jews believe but by rebuilding the third, the temple again, sacrificing these red heifers and rebuilding the temple, the Messiah will come. And the Christians now, after 2,000 years, are waiting for the coming of Jesus to return. So now you've got the three major religions in the world waiting for this coming. And I'm watching this movie, and it's all about this young man rising up and being declared basically a Messiah. I just, I even now I have chills mm. because I couldn't have made that up. I totally forgot what the movie was about. It didn't come out of my own head. And I get to see part two. And so those of you who've seen it or who will see it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And I watched part one again last night with one of my sons who hasn't seen it because I was curious again. And there's a line in there, and I want to go back and find it again, where someone speaks about this Mahdi coming in the midst of of chaos. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Just another sign that I think we're getting very close, possibly, to this coming of the Antichrist. And as we've discussed before, you know, and anyone who's intellectually honest has to say all the infrastructure is there for us to be marked on the skin, Mm -hmm. to be marked in some way, that there's been a a tattoo that's in development a tattoo that will go on the skin that will bring you up to date in your immunological status and you can scan it and read it all of this technology is there and the g20 just passed uh vaccine passport laws that that will obviously mean you're not going to be able to travel and have freedom of movement unless you're up to date i mean it's all there so i think we ought to do what jesus said he said stay awake watch and pray and we better be doing that yeah a lot of people are reading the headlines watching but are you praying that's the most important part because that's the part that gives you wisdom and peace to be able to go through this storm yeah. Yeah. but it's a belief in the prayer and that's a, a, a it's a great way for us to end here tonight mark um i want to end just by saying this and and people who have been following have said have heard me say this but now more than ever, we need not just a revival, but we need a supernatural revival. Uh, yes, pray. But believe in the prayer. Believe in the power of God. Where's that gone? We have had a 60-year or more, 100-year, you know, whatever your history is, what do you want to call it, war on the supernatural. And that's how we got weak. And that's how the devil is winning now. Because we, God is more powerful than the devil. But we're using manpower. We're not using God power. We are not relying on the supernatural power of God. And we have got, if, 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 yes, God can save us, but we have to believe that he has the power to do it. And we've lost that. Yeah. We've lost it through uh, how we offer the mass, our architecture. You know, where's the sense that you're in a temple any longer? Um, I, I don't know. It, just everything has been this war on the supernatural and yeah. so uh, that's my call i and here we are um we're in the octave of easter as we record right now we're celebrating jesus rising from the tomb uh, i've been reflecting re- recently on jesus calling lazarus out to take the stone away lazarus come out well i'm saying america come out come mm-hmm. out to what come out with quit playing church quit intellectualizing it you know 
uh, and, and, and to the expense of the supernatural. And let's make a return to the supernatural. I'm calling for a supernatural revival. And I do that now with this prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amazing, Mark. Mark. Thanks for being with us, brother. Always a pleasure. I love being with you guys.